Hi, this is another view of uh, our holiday, our walk to Bosham. Bosham. <clears throat> this is uh, the, the, the low tide, and we, we walked along the coast bit here, the salt coast here, salt marshes, and Bosham Church, which I painted, I think, yesterday or the day before, is round, just a bit further round. Uh, we've got uh, coming into Bosham Quay. A grey day, but we'll see what we can make of that. It's, it's quite a nondescript painting, really, or well, photograph, really, but it's, it's a very lovely area of flat coast line. So we'll have a go at it and see how we get on. I'll move that out of the way and I'll remember to zoom, zoom out and go back to the support, which is there. Okay, let's tie everything up so it doesn't drop when I'm not looking. Okay, that, that should do. So, get my, my Masterson palette. There it is. Got my cup of tea ready to go. Been out for another bike ride this morning along Bedington Farm area, which which as you now know is uh, being redeveloped as parkland and connecting Mitcham Common with Beddington Park this is our lovely park <clears throat> right I've, I've done a bit of a drawing that's not quite right uh, that that sort of roof is uh, is slightly well it's not parallel to the other end it's a nice nice shape so let's get it get more or less right. Uh, that sort of comes comes down like that. And down there is a veranda there. Boats along here at anchor. But Bosom Key is just round the corner here. <coughs> and the yacht club. <coughs> it's always nice when one of my subscribers admits to living here or living in Chichester, which is the main city or a small city. A Roman settlement originally, um, just over there a bit, for four miles, three or four miles. We were that way on a campsite, on a camping and caravanning campsite. It's very lovely at in an orchard at Southbourne. So lovely. There's a little bit of a tree up here. That I'll put it in, but the tree here, reedy, grassy stuff here. Salt marsh, so we'll we'll start to 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 put in some put in these buildings here. I think now that we let's just use this half inch flat. I'll go straight in. I'll, water probably a bit of water on my brush if I want. But the the roof is just a bit of a bit of a brownie. So we we'll just put that in. It's in the early stage, it's just a case of blocking in. And I think that roof comes down down there. And then there's a tree in the, in the way there, so we'll just leave that like that. Probably the chimney, I can't quite see the chimney stack. And then we've got a, a greyer roof here. So I just put these in just to remind me that we've got a roof. I'll water down a little bit. And there, another roof underneath. Now I like soft edges, but at this stage we're going to just put it in literally at the moment, then we can soften it later on as we go. And a bit of a, an ochre stony coloured here. A 
that, I've got another oakery stone that's there. Um, now everything else is obliterated by foliage which I'm now going to put in. That is a half inch nylon flat. It's made for acrylic painting but we use it in watercolour as well for lifting out and various uses. Swig of tea. Um, right, I'll, I'll, I'll use this scrappy little brush here for putting this background in here. There are lots of houses. When the tide's right out, this you can more or less walk out quite a bit of this. And, and the sort of bay here goes all the way around and out again. And off to the, to the Witterings, what we call the Witterings. What us local call, locals call the Witterings. So this is a, just a dark, silhouetted green on this horizon here. I do love going to this area. We've got to know it over the years and we've probably been to the club campsite. I say club site because we only really go on club sites. It's a huge camping club, mostly caravans and motor caravans and vans now. But my wife and I, last of the Mohicans, persevering in our trailer tent, which is very, very nice. It's getting old now like we are. But it won't get replaced, it's uh, We've had it for oh, 12 years, 10 years, and it was 10 years old when we got it. But it's in lovely condition, we don't use the kitchen inside of it. We, I cook outside mostly, if it's nice. On charcoal, or we even take induction hobs now. Can you believe that? Induction hobs. We have loads of electric. It wouldn't go otherwise. We were too old to, to rough it. And for any of those members that I've talked to and encouraged to look at my site, I have to say we've met some lovely, lovely people over the years. Campers, caravanners. All there for all the world to see. Right, that's, that's, I'll, I'll modify that. But I want it fairly dark because I'm going to put in houses and, or oh, just indicate some there, just solid that up a bit. New word, that solid up. New phrase. Right, I'll I'll uh, I'll put this tree in here, and then we can think about the sky. Uh, I'll use a small brush. A bit more yellow in in this. So let's. just want to get the, the bit done that meets the sky, so that's what I'm doing at this stage. Right, get some dark in here, a lot of red in with that, red and black, yellow. I love this, uh, using the red these very dark shadowy greens. Well, I kind of I fill that in because then I can put my my lights back over that. Okay. I'm on the track we go for our, the bike ride this morning along Bellington Farm. There are lots of cherry plum trees and a lot of people don't really know what they are. They're very, very small plums and now they're coming into sweetness and they're really beautiful. Right, okay, that'll do for that. Now we've got this grey sky, uh, fairly warm, with that warm colour. But I'll put in a very light background, so yellow ochre. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna in there.
that Wyatt has been sitting on the pallet of night is a bit sloppy. No, it's probably just a bit too dark. But when it dries, as you know, it dries very, very quickly. Go over the edges. Maybe we'll do it with the blue. A bit of nondescript grey. See, I'm going over the edges. I don't want the white sky. I mean, we say we, clouds aren't white or black, but we use a lot of white, but it's never really straight out of the tube. It's always modified with another colour. And that's the most light I really want to go now. And then that will be a good foil for my slightly darker clouds. Let's, oops. While I'm at it, I'll. Uh, so we've got a big cloud across the top, then a smaller one coming across here. Enjoying the acrylic, I must say. It's quite, quite fun. I like being able to alter and I like the softness I can get with it very quickly. I, I, I do everything at breakneck speed. Even growing old is quicker than ever. Right, uh, I've, got, I've got to plop that in there. But happily growing old disgracefully. Okay. Uh, don't know that will be there, so we'll just lose that. Right, now we're going for the grey. Now, good grey colour, well, a warm colour. I would think a bit of light red, oh cry. Light red not for me or cobalt. Makes a good grey. So I'm not gonna show you my mixing because I'll forget to zoom up again. So I've got a nice oh that's a bit heavy. And we've got this cloud coming, coming across here. Just sort of hanging there. Oh, there's a bit more blue in there. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Uh, be careful when you, you're working with the paint slightly damp. If you go over it too much before it's dry, it will remove it and then you've got a problem. Right, let's just, just add some. We can, we can do some modelling in this then. I'm using a bit of blue, which makes it white, but a bit grey. Quite dark here, yeah, so a bit more red, a bit more blue. Darker there. And a bit 
bit darker in here. So this is the cloud shadow because the sun was overhead if you could see it. Right, okay. Now we've got to put some, uh, oh well we've got some, some clouds coming in, in here. And then I'll go over this with a white, a very light colour. Just hanging there in the distance. That's all I can see really from the photograph. I never paint on this spot, I can't be bothered with all that. But don't let that stop you from going out and sitting out there with, with the flies and a bit of just warm that up a little bit with some some redder colour. Don't make your clouds flat. Put lots of different colours and shades in, as you as you would be when you look at it. Right, stop there for a second, have a, have a little cup of tea, then go back with the lighter softener. I'll use the same brush, this is going to be a good cleaner. Now you can always use a little bit of yellow in with your cloud, a bit of, a bit of vermilion, but plenty of white in the mix, we don't want it to uh, we'll just gently drag over those clouds there just to push them back. So that comes up there and there, all lovely and, and soft. Experiment. So I want this to be a cloud, not a blot in the sky. Look, just reducing the intensity. I'm just going to put some more white out. I might do this in two, two goes. See how we go. If it, the video gets too long, it takes ages to upload. It's easier to, to do it in two or three goes. Then I've got a nice, nice bit of warm in there. A touch of red, a touch of mid yellow. Just a tiny amount. And this is, gets very, very blended with the background. I'm really working literally from the photograph here. And then we've got this nice up here. Up. There. That to me looking quite good. The rest of the picture might not. And we've just had this Gentle, just bits of background poking through, but nice, lovely lights there, where the sun is sort of poking through. Just keep it soft. Right, let's go underneath those. Bottom clouds there, yeah, pretty yellow. Just a touch, just a teeny, really, just a tint. Just to change it from white to a sort of a nice cream. Uh, this is quite light. Oh, 
vous lavez vos mains. I'm just trying to soften everything now, just with this glaze or gentle scumble with a bit of paint on the brush. Okay, well that that is fairly accurate. I'll show you what I've done. Can you see that? That's what's there and that's what I've done. I've I've added the colour to make it more well because the, the camera does light to a certain extent, doesn't it? We all, all know that. Right, I'm going to put in some the, some lights on on here, and they will be grey on the blue side, and let's put that. Oops, it's too dark. Just going across. And then I can paint up to it. Um, then we've got a bit of sky reflected in down here. And we've got another channel here. Okay. So that is well, a bit of impact like that. Okay, so let's go back and do some of this grassy stuff now. I'll use my my big brush. I've got several of several of these brushes. They're so so good. So now the plenty of yellow ochre I can see in, in the the mix. So black, yellow ochre, bit of light red. So I just put in a, a darker sort of background underneath everything here. It's a bit of a path coming down here. So nice red in there, good warm. You don't have to use the colours I'm using. You can use any colour you're you're happy with. But what I would say is that the more colours you have, the harder your painting is going to be. It's far better to say what you can as far as you can with as little as you can. It makes it easier to remix colours. Learn, say half dozen eight colours. Stick with them and do everything that they can do. But it's what eight colours you use. You know my palette. It's uh, basically ultramarine, burnt sienna, a lemon yellow, a raw or yellow ochre with uh, acrylics, vermilion now, light red, a bit of alizarin crimson. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, 
I got more than eight. But anyway, I don't use them all. I haven't used the Elizabeth on this one. Now the idea of painting dark is that you can superimpose your lights over it. Now I've not used any medium, just black, yellow and red on the red side of the dark because it gives that foil to put over your your lovely light colours. We'll let that dry in a minute. I can't use that brush in there. Two hits and miss. Right, okay, so so there we are. That's that's my foreground. <coughs> that's the, roughly the shape. Probably I can come up a little bit there. But now I want to put in um, some salt marsh. Then we can reinstate some of this. Then we'll start working on the foliage again and, and texturing all this foreground. And there are millions of pieces of grass and we well, most mostly marsh grass, rye, I don't know what it is, but you can't put it all in, but you can if you want, but uh, it's not what I would recommend. Now the yellow is quite, it's just a little bit green, I'm sticking with black, I haven't used any of the uh, phthalo, so let's just put these in, it might be best if they're just a little bit dark. Across here. And we've got these are just the, the lighter tops. And this brush is really worn out now. So we'll just do a bit like that now. Bit of a uh, bit of dark, dark green. This is a shadow. a bit of my water there. Right, I'm going to scrap that brush I think. It's going to be a bit... Uh, have I got another brush I can use? Yeah, I'll use this one. Oh, sorry if I hit the uh, tripod. Right, so some lighter colour now for the tops of those. No, it's not making a very good green here. Try to keep this soft. This is the uh, just a bit dark. That's better. More of a grey, grey green. This isn't the exact. Uh, 
there's some darker ones in, in here. Okay, now we can put some more, put the, uh, the greeny light back on. If I lived near salt marshes, I'd be a lot better at doing this because I would work at more of them. But lovely to see, but not easy to paint. Right, okay, let's put some darks back there now. Nice warm darks, so I'll use burnt sienna and a bit of black. Okay, we've got a bit of light on some of that. Um, I can see a bit of sandy colour. I don't know if it is, but it might be a little bit of a bit of June, a bit of sand there. There's a bit of a lump here. Now that nice light ochre green. Fine, put in some some of the sky back in. So I'll put in a bit slightly blue. It might have quite an impact. Open up a little bit with some wet.
it's not pure white, it's just bluish. Right, I think that's coming on. How does that look on there? <coughs> right, I'll show you what, I, what I've done. There we are. Now we've just got to start putting some detail back in up here now. So, um, that's a grey, bluey, lighten that roof there. There and nice sort of browny colour or there. Bit of shadowy can I use black mixed in with that? I'll put a bit of light in there. I want this quite rough. Right, okay, then we want to we'll put a chimney stack in there. So just Sort of rounded there, just a hint. Now some texturing. So in the event that didn't go in too difficult, did it? That looks fairly lost in the landscape. Now we're going to have some fun. I need to put out some more mid yellow. So I'll clean off the nice palette. A nice painting knife. Clean off there. I'm going to just use black. I'm not going to use, well, if I can get away with that using that halo, I will. I like this medium yellow. It's like a cadmium yellow medium. But they probably can't call it that. Okay, so here we go. Bit of black. Bit of red. Nice one. Bit of white. Bit of ochre. I'll put that path back in there. Bit of white. I like putting plenty of uh, I might have to change the brush, it's just going to work out a bit too far, I wasn't there. Uh, 
keep your brushes wet when you're not using them because they'll, the, the paint will harden very quickly. Right, let's get this uh, half here. Okay, now we've got the uh, some of that there, but I want some of that flatter. I need some yellow ochre. I haven't got my key, excuse me. Well, it's lukewarm now. Yeah, I don't like hot tea. I like hot tea. Yes, I just want to mix the yellow ochre with some white and get some nice See that that's dry brushing nicely there. Oh, let's just get this light on this this side here. And a bit of dark, dark green. Oh, okay, go back to that. Then. Light yellow, and black. Try to do this without so much stipple. And I'll just put some detail in at the end. Coming on, a bit of red in that dark there. I've got to go back over this a little bit. In fact, while that's going off there, I'll, I'll, I will now go back to my big brush on here for the flicks and flourishes. Um, so I used a little brush, didn't I, for that? Oh, are you still with me? What I think of it, there's a little window there. Three there. Right, um, so blue, burnt sienna, bit of yellow. More blue. Now 
Right, okay. Let's just put this back here. Now there's paint on the paper, you can dry brush over it, but it just hits the high spots. Put a bit of green in there as well. Oh, all very gentle, delicate. Well, I don't really want to come back to this because we're well on the way to. Still finishing that. Uh, just put a bit of, bit of dark on the shadow area here. What's that look like? Script, so it's a bit of green over there. Okay. Right. Um, with my half inch flat, I'm just going to indicate some boats and some yachts, little bits of houses. Sort of a grey sort of light. Uh, oops. And this is just buildings and then we can put our put our yachts in there and our little bits of boats. Not showing is it? That'll do. Probably some little red roofs. Okay. That will do there. So let's get that nice. Green on top of this. Right, okay, now we'll go back to the big, oops, another one, it's a big berth up. And just put in some, some grasses. I'll do some of the rigour, but I just want to do the shortcut. Hmm. 
の前の上かなしんごえんはい。
오래요. 자, 이것이 이제 네 보슴 보슴 키 West Sussex an impression thereof. Let's bring that round there. All right, zoom. Let's go into the background first. Just those distant tree lines with some small buildings, yachts, uh, some buildings there, roughly painted. And now the salt marsh. As simple as I can. And there we are. So, so that's it. So here's the picture. That's the photo. Oh. Well, there it is. All right, got it. And there we have it. Right. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.